I always knew like school was important. If I could go back, oh my God, the things I would do. Because she's black, she's gonna act ratchet. Sassy. Disrespectful. Unruly. Rowdy person or loud person. Ghetto. Combative. Defiant. Hypersexual. Well, you take these different stereotypes and you create the perfect storm for black girls. Looking specifically at the experiences of girls of color, we found that some of the conditions that pushed girls out of school had to do with the way teachers interpreted their behavior. They just feel like, oh, because she's black, she's gonna act ratchet or ghetto or act out. They don't take the time to sit us down and talk to us. We have a lot of security guards inside schools. I feel like we need more you know, therapists inside schools. There are lowered standards um, set for black girls that makes them feel that they are not wanted in school, that school is not the most appropriate place for them, and that they're not really capable of being competitive in these schools, such that they feel that that's not a welcome learning environment and so they avoid going. I'm grateful to have my own place, to have a job. You know, without a high school diploma, it's hard. I felt like I had to go to school and I wasn't really like probably gonna do anything that I went to school for, like in real life. I wanted to be a, a criminal justice lawyer. That's so many years of school and dedication. in terms of long-term earnings, actually being pushed out of school, not getting a high school diploma, suppresses the wages of women more than it suppresses the wages of men. It's hard, especially when you feel like you have to do certain things in order to survive. School is an important protective factor against contact with the juvenile legal system. A girl who is not in school is a girl who is in danger. I was, you know, doing scams, I was selling drugs, you know, just do crazy shit when I could have been in school. If I could go back, oh my God, the things I would do. I don't think they understand when a student acts out, it's because they're going through something at home. So usually I have to pick up my brother every day after school. And it takes me like an hour and a half to get to his school. I had to learn to like, learn how to manage my time a little bit better. I definitely learned how to take care of other people cause I can't just pick him up. I have to pick him up watch him, feed him. Child care responsibilities for girls in particular, uh, not only uh, girls who are parenting, but girls who are taking on the responsibilities of other parents, sometimes get pushed out of school because it's difficult to do that and also uh, be in school. I don't know any boys that take care of their siblings, <laughs> to be honest. It's only my mom, and she works, so she can never really make it to pick him up. This is Atlantic Avenue Barclays Center. Transfer is available to East B. Sometimes I do my homework on the train. Like these past two days, I've been typing up a PowerPoint on the train. So I had four hours of sleep last night. So I'm exhausted. I'm not at the same level. I'm behind. The next and last stop is Crown Heights Unit Academy. Jeremiah, come on, go that way.
I need to exercise. Right. I really want to go to school. Like my motivation in the morning to go to school is to graduate. College is my main goal right now. I feel like that's like where I could feel like a little free bird and fly. I'm a program coordinator for CCFY, Community Connections for Youth. The reason why I do this work is because I wish I would have had someone like me telling me that. I tell my students now, like, finish school. When I talk to my youth, like, especially the girls, they be like, Star, you're mad dope, you pretty, like, you mad cool. But when I tell them certain things, they listen to me. Hey, Rakim. When I'm listening to these young people, we're, we're too much talking, yelling. and telling them how horrible they are, how bad they are, instead of uplifting them and listening. Everybody wants to be heard.